little mini book haul. Okay, where does Hunger Games end and Powerless begin? Immediately, like, this book just makes me want to cry. Hello, gorgeous reading, angel, bestie, queens. I hope they're having the most wonderful day of your entire stinking life. Today we are starting one of my favorite videos to film, honestly, and it's been a while since we've done one. This is going to be the ultimate book video because we are going to go book shopping. We're gonna do a little bit of a book haul, hopefully, if the shopping goes well. And then we're going to do a reading vlog for at least one of the books that we picked up during our book shopping trip. So I hope that you're excited. If you are, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. We'll talk about the intentions behind this book shopping trip. We have an open mind. We'll see what kind of calls to us. I'm also very excited because I've never been to this Barnes before. This will be the first trip to Barnes and Noble in our new state since we just moved. And I'm not even joking, y'all. It's like five minutes from my house. So it's a little dangerous. <laughs> little mini book haul. I wanted to get more clips in Barnes & Noble, but there were so many people in there and I got really scared. So we did a quick walk around, a quick lay of the land. I feel like it's actually a really good Barnes & Noble. I picked up four books that I'm very excited for. So let's start with Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I am so late to this hype train. I have seen everyone scream cry love this book so much and i cannot wait to get to it it's a fantasy romance between payden and kai i have heard that kai is stunning gorgeous amazing beautiful i can't wait to experience him for myself the other book that i got that i haven't read yet is ruthless vows by rebecca ross She's gorgeous, she's beautiful. I actually picked her up because Realmathon for Team Time, you get extra points for reading books with a white cover. And so I'm going to try to squeeze this in in March and get some extra points. So Ruthless Vows. This is the second book in the Divine Rivals duology. I think that's what it's called. I'm also late to the train on this one because this came out in December and it's currently February and I loved Divine Rivals. It made me cry, I gave it five stars. And then, you know, I wasn't planning to get these, but I said that we were going in with an open mind. And when I saw them in person, I was like, absolutely yes. So I picked up the Barnes and Noble special editions of Ninth House and Hellbent. They have beautiful sprayed edges as well. And they're actually, for special edition sprayed edges, they're a bit floppier than what I had expected them to be. Like they're actually not too bad. I don't own a copy of Hellbent, so I'm very happy to have this in my hands. Now I'm trying to figure out where the best place to display these gorgeous beauties will be. This is the book haul. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so I think that the plan for this reading vlog portion is going to be starting with Powerless. I have the audiobook for this. I have it on Everand, and lately my brain has just been geared towards audiobooks. My brain has felt so preoccupied lately that when I actually sit down to read, I find it extremely difficult to focus. Comes with the territory of wedding planning and when your wedding is 
two months away now. So I'm trying not to have an organic thought and I have been nonstop listening to audiobooks. So I think that this is going to be my best bet. Powerless is about only the extraordinary belong in the kingdom of Ilya, the exceptional, the elites. The elites have possessed powers for decades, gifted to them by the plague, while those born ordinary are just that, banished from the kingdom of Ilya and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Payton Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites, but when she unwittingly saves one of Ilya's princes, Kai Azar, she's thrown into the purging trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elites' powers. If the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the prince she's fighting feelings for will if he discovers what Peyton is completely ordinary. Y'all, this book took the book community by storm like months ago, like probably last year, I think, and I still haven't read it. I love a deadly competition setup, so this is going to be so fun. And then my plan is to also read Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross in this vlog. I don't have the audio for it. I tried to put a hold in on Libby, but the wait is several months long. And so I think that I will still be able to read it and get to it. The first book read so quickly. And like I mentioned, I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. I will link my reading vlog for Divine Rivals down below if you would like to watch that. Because this is the second book in a duology, no spoilers for it. I will just give like overall thoughts, feelings, and <laughs> vibes. And I'm really hoping that this book doesn't make me sob cry like the first one did. <laughs> update about powerless and i've literally tried to film this clip three times now because i don't know what i want to say about this book <laughs> when i start talking about this world building and this magic system it sounds like i'm just bashing this book i promise i'm not hating this book so far i'm gonna give things that i'm liking about it and things that i'm not liking about it so i'm 150 pages in I'm listening to the audiobook. I'm actually immersive reading this book so I can try to like get through it pretty quickly. And I'm really enjoying the audiobook. I think that the narrators for both Peyton and Kai's characters are really good. I also really like the way the narrators read the banter in the chapters. So that's really fun. The other thing that I really like is that it's dual POV. So you flip between Peyton and, and Kai, like I just said. But you get like... Hayden's chapter will end with a scene and like Kai will enter or she will enter and like something will happen and then you flip to the other's perspective and it kind of rehashes a little bit at least of that same scene through the other person's POV and I think that's really fun that it doesn't just like move past what just happened it gives you that same scene and how they're each experiencing it there have been a couple knife to the throat scenes and a sparring scene together which is so fun because they're both really good fighters the things that i'm getting really bogged down about is the fact that the world building and the magic system are so overly simplistic and like not explained at all and that's where i have a lot of questions i'm only 150 pages into the book and i need to relax we're probably gonna get more explanation about these things there was a plague 30 years ago the people that survived the plague for the most part got magic abilities typically that enhanced traits that they already had it sounds like and then two magical people when they decide to have a baby that baby most likely like 90 percent chance it seems like will also have magical abilities that may or may not be the same magical abilities as their parents that's what it seems like because all of our characters in the trials right now are teenagers so none of them would have been around 30 years ago when the plague first took place that's the explanation that we got you know in the exposition of this first beginning piece about the magic what's confusing to me is that like it was explained people who were really stealthy pre-plague maybe they were thieves or whatever they just were really good at blending into the shadows they might have invisibility people who are like built like really tall really strong they get super strength and they're called a brawny i believe 
you get what I mean. But there's some powers that don't match that explanation. So Kit, who is Kai's brother, the other prince, he has a fire ability. And then Kai has like this really unique ability where he can, anyone who's in his vicinity that has a magical ability, he can manipulate it and use it as his own. So he can turn people's powers against him. So when he's sparring with his brother Kit, he can steal that magical ability and use it for himself. None of them had the plague. So like when they have magical parents, and then they have their baby and it turns out to be Kai, does that just mean they get like a rogue magical power? Like whatever, whatever we want it to be, it just like pops up. That's the one thing that's confusing. The second thing that's confusing right now is the purpose of these trials. Like these, they call them the elites, the people who have magical abilities after the plague. They have these trials, like for what? to celebrate, people will always say like, thank the plague, because without the plague, they wouldn't have these magical abilities, even though inherently like, a plague is a bad thing and a plague kills a lot of people. But they, they throw these trials to celebrate the plague, to show off magical abilities, but then they force like lower level magical people, like from the slums, to participate and so far we don't know what these trials entail but it sounds like not everyone survives and all of the contestants are teenagers so like that doesn't make a lot of sense to me hopefully my next check-in is a little bit less mixed i am almost at my page goal i'm on page 276 so i only have maybe like 30 more pages to read of the section that i was hoping to accomplish today it's gotten better <laughs> so that's really positive we jumped into the trials and at first i was like okay where does hunger games end and powerless begin like this is extremely hunger games coded i think that their dynamic through the trials has been really really cute kai is adorable and he has all of these one-liners that are just so cute it was an interesting choice i think for lauren roberts to make kai very like gentlemanly he really just wants to take care of Peyton, even though he knows that she can be self-sufficient and she's a really good fighter and she can take care of herself he just like has that caring element to him which makes him very endearing because his overall character is you know like the executioner of the kingdom he is known to be extremely cunning and ruthless i still wouldn't say the writing in the world is super strong for me for a fantasy like it's basically a hunger games that isn't set up as well and i think what was annoying me at first you know i understand that books are going to have similar setups right like not every story is going to be the most unique thing in the whole entire world but this wasn't adding anything to that setup to make it its own to make it unique besides these magical abilities and even that wasn't like flushed out enough for me so I'm not saying it's it went from like a three star to a five star. I'm, I definitely still have some questions about it. However, the romance is the focal point of this book. I'm going to finish up this section. We'll see if I end up reading any more, but I did want to do that check-in because I just got to such a cliffhanger. This can't be true. This can't be true. I need to keep listening. coming fresh out of finishing Powerless. And I'm really torn with how I feel about this. So I actually really liked the romance. Like as I continued reading this book, I really loved Peyton and Kai's romance. <laughs> I'm really hesitant to call this kind of like a love triangle because sort of like kind of was at the setup, yes, but you knew that that was never, <laughs> that was never actually gonna happen. I love Kai's like he falls first and he falls so hard and he just like decides not to fight his feelings at all for her throughout the whole book and his perspective chapters 
the sparring scenes. There was the microtrope of like the nightmares, which I absolutely loved. Romance for me would probably be like a four star. What I really struggled with was the plot. Like the plot was so ununique. It really felt like this book was just copying plots from other books. But then as we continued through the book, like all of the trials continued to be copying. There was one scene that was extremely similar to the Goblet of Fire and I was like, Bestie, like what are we doing here? However, I really liked the end. My hope is that this is probably the weakest book in the series and the romance in this was still really good. So because of that, plot, I'm not gonna lie y'all, was like a two star for me. So I'm gonna go right in between four star romance, two star plot, this is going to be a three star. Please don't be mad at me. Like I still did really enjoy this book. But Ruthless Vows is up next. I'm a little nervy because I don't have an audiobook for this and audiobooks have been serving me very well. My goal is to read tonight and this formatting in this book is very easy as well. So let's say the first 120 pages. So the first 15 chapters is what I'm going to try to read tonight. Hello besties. I am on my way to get my nails done. I just picked up a coffee and a Danish, which I'm very excited about. But I wanted to do a little bit of an update on Ruthless Vow. I made it to 72 last night. And immediately, like, this book just makes me want to cry. Like, Roman and Iris. The fact that they... Ugh, I don't want to spoil anything. Their love is just like a Taylor Swift song to me. I'm obsessed with them. This book, if you're unfamiliar with divine rival this is a fantasy but it kind of takes place in i think it's giving more world war one vibes than world war ii because they mention like a mustard gas type situation in the first book and so that makes me think of world war one I. I might be off with that but they're they turn into like war correspondents but they work at the same newspaper trying to like outright each other and their rival journalists and their banter is incredible in the first book instead of it being like a true world war one it's like a war against two gods and the god setup is very hades and persephone Esque, except make it like a little bit more toxic and the persephone character escapes and that's why like they're at war so this book picks up almost right where the last one left off which is really great but it immediately seems like we're getting a lot more detail into the god setup in this world and a bit more not only into their story but into almost like all the world building is happening in this one you get like a little bit in the first one to the point where things are still a mystery and so if that confuses you there's that, but you get more information, it seems like, in Ruthless Vows. People totally just saw me talking to my camera. I'm gonna go now. Hee <laughs> hee. Hello, friends. It has been quite a few days since my last update. My last update was Friday. Today is Wednesday. <laughs> So this vlog needs to go up tomorrow. I am desperately trying to finish this book so I can give final thoughts, but I am quite a bit more into the book than my last check-in. So I am now on page 264, chapter 37. I only have 150 pages left. This does read very, very quickly. It is not for lack of interest in this book that I'm reading slowly. It is the fact that I don't have the audiobook and my brain has been so spicy lately and it's just causing problems with my reading. Very general overall thoughts about how I'm feeling. I love being back with Kit and Iris. I just love them and I love their love. Rebecca Ross does a great job in both Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows in showing, not telling us. So Kit and Iris give off soulmate vibes so hard obsessed with their love the way that they talk about each other the way that they express their love to each other it's so touching and it's so meaningful and we are shown that they are soulmates through the most perilous of times through the war through them being like separated at times they're just going through it there is this massive looming cloud of death over them. We just don't know what's going to happen with these gods, with the war. If one of them dies, y'all, I'm just saying like, I 
will not be okay in my final check-in. I could not bear that. But I love being shown that they're soulmates. It is just the most beautiful thing in the whole entire world and I'm obsessed with it and I love the way that Rebecca Ross did that for us. What is making me nervous and I'm really trying to scramble to finish this book before I end this vlog because so many people like myself who loved Divine Rivals and gave it like five stars I've seen very mixed reviews about Ruthless Vows and that makes me so scared because it has to be something with the ending. The only thing that I'm wishing we got a little bit more of in this book and learn more about these gods that are at war with each other and like recruiting mortals to fight for their sides. We haven't gotten much more of that. Even though we're spending a lot more time with Dacker, Dacker and Enva are the two gods that are at war with each other. They used to be lovers, but it was like unrequited love. Enva never really loved Dacker. He's in Persephone type setup. He was in the underworld. He made Enva come under the underworld and she escaped from him. That's all we know of them. <laughs> like, I need to know. They're just at war so that Dacker can like capture her again and like take her back under the underworld. Like, I wanted a little bit more into their love story i thought that that was going to be the parallel in this book i'm gonna stop holding it now i thought the parallel was going to be iris and kit and their like beautiful love story really nicely contrasted with enva and dacker and their not so love story it's a lot messier it's a lot more toxic and we're not really getting that we'll see if we get any more answers i'm going to i'm going to read we're going to manifest that i'm going to finish this book and my next check-in. Hello friends, I have some good news. I did finish Ruthless Vows. I'm actually pretty much coming out of finishing it with this update, same as how I did with Powerless. I ended up giving this book four stars. I really liked it. I had to look up why people were not liking it and having mixed reviews because once I got to the end, I was like, were they mad about something heartbreaking does really happen at the end? And I was like, were they mad about that? Or like, what's the deal? But I think the overall feedback for this book was that the pacing was a little bit off for some people and then also this wasn't just like a super happy ending with iris and roman together they're separated at certain points in this book just like they were in the first book as well and so i liked it i thought it was pretty well done i think the only part that i wished we got more detail into but it would have just had to have been a longer book honestly if it went into what i'm asking for I wanted more of Enva and Dacker. I leave this book feeling like the gods are all trash, but Enva especially? You see her more in this book, you engage a lot more with Dacker, you get a lot of insight into his mentality and how he sees goddom in this realm and in this world, but Enva just stays a mystery the entire time and like that didn't sit super well with me because like, so many mortals died on her behalf and it was just a little bit weird that she remains this ethereal overseeing presence that like isn't engaging in a war because of her like directly her actions she ran away from dacker and now people are dying because of it but iris and roman are perfection i love them so much so with that friends i'm going to end this vlog here i hope that you enjoyed if you did please be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you've watched this far and you would like to let me know that you are here leave the little heart envelope for ruthless vows i will catch you in the comments and i will see you in my next one friends bye